All right, we are ready to go. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, the, the power parts where uh, we will be diving into the ORB3 power details. My name is Harry Soin from uh, uh, AE Advanced Energy. I'm a uh, technical marketing director for the hyperscale space, uh, along with... Hi, my name is Gian Aydin. So I'm the lead engineer, uh, select senior electrical engineer for Delta Electronics and working on the ORV3 development. Oh, thank you, thank you. So uh, Jing Jing has provided details, a complete overview of uh, ORV3 power systems. Uh, uh, Jihan and I will be deep diving into it and getting you further details. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to you. Okay. So first of all, here's the content overview, just for, for a second so you can check it and uh, we can move directly to the first topic. So here we have a comparison of the ORV3, 3000 watts, to the existing one, the HPR, which is a 5.5. And uh, this is already outlook for the next generation, the HPR2 or HPR V2. We are talking about uh, 12,000 watts PSU. So as you can see on the right, that's the first generation. We have a 3,000 watt module, and um, it, uh, we have an output current of 60 amps. In the second generation, which is called the HPR, here's a show. Um, one module to show you, um, to visualize the steps. Um, yeah, you can see we, we moved from 3,000 watts to 5,500, and which means from 60 to 112 amps, and we are still fulfilling the same requirements like the hold up time, which you can imagine to double nearly the power and to still have the 20 milliseconds. On top of that, we are now going to the HPR V2, which we started, and uh, as you can see, we are talking about a 12,000 watts PSU, so the current increased uh, to 244 amps. So here is a small or short comparison. You see we moved from the first generation to the second from 520 to 640 mm. And this means we have an increase by 23% of, uh, of the space, but the power increase is 83%. And now, the next step for us is moving from HPR to HPR V2. We have a, a length increase by 11% and the power increase by 118%, just to give you a feeling about that. And to visualize this, so this is what we gain from 3000 watts to 5.5 to 12. I mean, I will pick that later to our booth. You can check it just to have a feeling for this. And um, yeah, the major difference from ORV3 to the HPR, so Jingjing Jing had already a good introduction into this. She has showed uh, some of the slides. Um, the power increase, we, we are now going um, from 33, oh, this was the old one, to 72 kilowatts. Sorry for that. <laughs> the transition method changed from uh, first generation to second generation to a dedicated signal. And for this dedicated signal, we always made sure this one is not triggered for during the pulse load. So you can imagine the PSU supports 136% for 50 milliseconds without triggering the BBU. And this is huge energy, and uh, it was a big challenge to us, to be honest. Um, second, oh, sorry. second point is the power monitoring module. So now we have a dedicated uh, microcontroller which is uh, polling the information, collecting it, and then directly serving it uh, to the top of the rack. So what, what we can say is um, from the first generation where we have an 18 kilowatt shelf, we move to a 33 kilowatt shelf in the same outer dimension. So you can imagine we need to shorten our shelf inner layers and uh, to gain the space. So what we are facing with all the increasing AI demands and the pulse load and so on, is that all, all the data centers want to decrease uh, the current fluctuation on the input side. And due to this one, we are working on a peak shaving shelf. So which means this shelf kicks in once the peak load is coming so that the power supply is working smoothly in steady state, nearly steady state. So you minimize the input current fluctuation. 
So here's one of our actual efficiency curves for the HPR. So at 277, where it's optimized, so we have a peak efficiency of 97.7, and at the full load, we are also above 96.5. Here's a short uh, overview about the actual product. So as you know, we have the 3,000 watt module, we have the 5,500 watt module, and uh, the new one, we are going to 12,000 watts. We have a one OU shelf, a two OU shelf, and also um, the, the power management module and the PMI available. Okay, then let me hand over to Harry. All right, thank you. Thanks, that was a great overview. So now moving forward, uh, just a, a brief overview of uh, the, the power shelf that AE has designed. Uh, you've seen that before, but just as a refresher, as we dive into the further details uh, over the next slides, uh, there are six slots for PSU. Each PSU is five and a half kilowatts, giving you a total of 33 kilowatts, right? So you've seen the appreciation how we have gone from 18 kilowatts to 33 kilowatts, and thank you for providing this. I think this is really good. So uh, 50 volts. Uh, what's really important is I want to bring your attention to uh, the, uh, what, what Jihan touched on, the, the, the loading profile going up to 133, 130% 130 load and then going further up in power to 160 plus. So I'll get dive into those details in a minute. So in terms of rectifier, uh, it's 5,500 watts, it's 50 volts output, tight regulation, and it's specifically designed for AI and ML workloads, right, as we go forward. So, and the communication is by, uh, by the Modbus. So the, the key topic of my talk today is talking about the challenges we face and addressing a very important aspect, which is uh, the dynamic load. Uh, and we have heard all about it, the, the GPU's workload profile, you know, how we, we get, you know, uh, large increase in power and how we and then the power comes down for a time so this is a challenge we had and you know we have to find ways to address it as we move forward so the idea is you know when you see all those disturbances in the output and how do we minimize or eliminate its impact on on the ac side on the input side so that's the part i'll be touching and, and getting into deep diving into it. And what's really important is the real measure of that is your power factor, the shape of your AC current, and your uh, ITHT, right? Those are the key factors, and that's, that's how we know how, we, how good a job we are doing as we move forward. So uh, we talked about, so, so Jing Jing talked about 136% load. Uh, and 160% load. So I'll start with 136% load, where you know your your load is going up from 15% to 136%, and and the duration of that step is just as critical. And in in this the slide you are seeing, we are talking about 40 hertz, right? Which is uh, which is you know which is the most critical and the most important and the difficult part here. So what you are seeing is you are seeing your current go up. Uh, pay attention to the, the the yellow curve. You're seeing the the, the voltage go voltage moving at the same time. But more importantly, and you're seeing your bulk voltage changing. But 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 the real and and when you look at the input current, you're seeing hardly any changes. Input current looks very very close to sinusoidal, and you don't see much distortion. And we confirm that if you look at the power factor measurement and you look at the ITHD measurement, they're close to six percent. So this is a condition where you have set your input power limit to 8.8 .8 kilowatts, right? For a 5.5 kilowatt power supply. So, and, and it's at 40 hertz. Uh, taking you to the further step where in this case, uh, you know, you have set the limit now from 8.8 .8 to 7.5 kilowatts. So you would imagine when you do this, you would see a an improvement in ITHD, it's obviously come down to 4.65 from seven in the neighborhood of seven in the past, and you are seeing good power factor. More importantly, look at the red curve, your input current looks perfectly sinusoidal. So all we are saying is that, you know, we are minimizing the, the impact on the AC line and what we are feeding into the AC line or the grid, it, uh, you know, and addressing the G critical GPU loads at the same time. 
All right, so this is a higher frequency, 1.25 kilohertz. We are setting at 8.8 .8 kilowatt at a very high, again, a power limit. And you are seeing your IITHD. It's, it's again a low number, and you're looking at the input current, and it looks really, really good. And mind you, this is 160% load, right? So this is really, the power supply is really pumping out good power here. And here in this case, also you are seeing your THD at 2.91. You expect it to come down as, you know, what's happening, your power, your power peak power limit is set to a, a lower number. All right, so this is really important. Uh, what we are talking about here is, if we don't do any of these things, right, and if we set the input power limit to 4.5 kilowatts. So we all know what's the maximum power of the power supply. It's 5.5 kilowatts, right? You're setting now, in this case, the limit to the lower than the power supply maximum output. So what do you expect? You would expect, as expected, power supply will eventually shut down, right? And this is in the absence of any control. And when and how do we address this by having this uh, mod bus control and how setting, you know, in this case, look, you're setting the output power to 4.5 volts, but power supply will automatically adjust the threshold so that you are seeing the input, you're seeing all the perturbations, you are seeing initially uh, the current going down, but then power supply automatically adjusts automatically to the peak limit and you are seeing, uh, uh, that power supply doesn't shut down and you have a good performance, you know, from the output. And this is by setting uh, the threshold to 4.5 kilowatt. So I hope I've addressed all the critical aspects and how the GPU loading and how the dynamic performance is addressed uh, by, the, uh, by the, the circuitry and by the improvement that we incorporate in the power supply. So just moving forward, and uh, you, uh, you've heard this before, uh, another important part uh, in the ORV3 system is uh, a power monitoring module. This module uh, does automatic addressing, uh, collects the real-time data, critical data from the power supply and power shelf, and communicates to the upstream system so that you know you have all the all the latest information. Uh, on the, on the system, so you know we keep, we keep monitoring. It's really a monitoring module uh, which complements uh, your ORV3 power shelf. All right, so we talked about ORV3, and uh, Jihan talked about you know starting from 3.3, how we go to 5.5. To now we have gone from three kilowatt power supply to five and a half to 12. Uh, so the question is, you know, what we fail to appreciate, and this has happened in a time span of what, a year and a half, right? And there's been an exponential increase in power, and we don't see an end. So we see 5.5, we talk about 10. If you walk on the, on the, uh, in the show here, you are seeing 8.5, we talk about 12, and where do you go from here? You are seeing the rack power increase from, we saw previous slides from, uh, 18 kilowatt typical to 33 to uh, 72 kilowatt. People are talking about one megawatt racks. You saw that in the previous slides. So in order to do that, you know, we need building blocks. Uh, we are talking about HVDC. We are talking about sidecars. So there is a lot of things at play, uh, you know, in order to address that. So, you know, just, just keeping it out there so, you know, I think the rack and power part becomes really important and we need everyone's involvement. How do we work together to address the industry's uh, high power needs? Uh, I just, I'm just gonna touch up on uh, uh, AE's uh, product portfolio that, you know, we do have 18 kilowatt uh, power shelves. We have corresponding three kilowatt and five and a half kilowatt BSUs that complement complement that. We have uh, PMM, power management controllers, like, uh, like Delta talked about, and we are also actively working on the next generation, 12 kilowatt and, and beyond, uh, as we move forward and address those uh, critical power needs. Uh, and finally, just moving to the last part, uh, before we entertain your questions is, you know, before any time else, I think this is really a critical part where we need communities 
involvement, you know, to take to next generation. Uh, you have seen Meta's contribution, and I keep on consistently updating, you know, on a day, almost on a on a weekly basis, the BBU spec, the power spec, shelf specs. But you know, we need everybody else's input so that you know we can see the variance, how you know your input to very address your needs if you need to you know modify the spec or you know get everybody's input into play so you know and our call is held every second wednesday of uh, uh, every month uh, 9 a.m uh, pst so look forward to seeing you all there and uh, besides that i think we're open for questions Uh, real quickly, how, where are you guys at with liquid cooling the uh, residual? Where we are at liquid cooling, uh, we are looking at that. I mean, li liquid cooling is an important part. And you know, power supply is a it's a two percent of the problem really. And with with the need and with with uh, the way the power is increasing, I think at this point we believe we can address the, address the power needs till, till I don't know till about hundred kilowatts or so thereabouts power, and once the power gets beyond that, you know, we will be, we will be coming up with those solutions. Right, I see the seduction where you're going with that, mm -hmm. and I get that two, two and a half, maybe three percent, um, yeah. but at megawatt, that's 10, 15 kilowatts that you gotta get rid of. 40 and kilowatts, you're not yeah, gonna yeah. like 60 C input air, mm -hmm. right? So you're not gonna do what you say you're gonna do at nope. 60 C input, so no. that fraction is a problem, you don't wanna touch it, and yeah, in the data center itself, it's a real pain in the neck. Mm -hmm. Add? Yeah, correct. So for the PSUs, I think at the moment we don't see it, not now, to be honest, but with the increasing power, definitely this is one topic we are looking at. And what is most likely is that will that it will be introduced maybe first in on the bus bar level, mm -hmm. as you put many shelves into one rack, and you can imagine to the, the thermal effect on the bus bars. Right. Um, in the past, I've seen... Uh, some of your companies offer uh, six kilowatt three-phase input rectifiers. Mm -hmm. The advantage being that when it's three-phase input, it's automatically phase balanced. And I'm wondering now, seeing as the power is getting way up there, why are you not considering offering three-phase solutions? No, that's, that's, I think that's a, that's a very, very, very good question. It's not that we are not considering offering it. I think it, it's probably a trade-off. Uh, and as you know, that you know, phase balancing can be done with with, with the, the way we are using a multiple of threes. But I believe once we come to a threshold, I, I, I don't know, our guess is around 20 kilowatts or thereabouts, or slightly above that, we will need to consider three phase. Anything else? Yeah, exactly, like I mentioned. But I think at the moment, as we need the power demand of AI, and it's increasing heavily, to, if, we, if you need to change the complete infrastructure of the, of the data center, this is taking a bit more time. That's why for the short term, I think the, the single phase is the way, but definitely for long term, we are moving to three phase. Right. Yeah, correct, but the AC whips and so on, that's, yeah. that's a different scenario and it's a right. different story, to be honest. But thank you. Any other questions? If not, I think we, we thank you for your time. <coughs>